danger. Sulfuric acid is corrosive, sodium hydroxide is also corrosive, and isopropanol is flammable. Don't try this at home! Hooray! Hello, triers! So today we'll be synthesizing a dipic acid from zip ties, well, specifically nylon 66, which it's called that because ni um, nylons are polyamides, which means they have uh, a carboxylic acid attached to an amide. So the 6 means that there's 6 carbon chains, which is the dipic acid, and another 6 for hexamethylene diamine, which I did not drop because I'm lazy. But yeah, so that's why it's called nylon 6-6. Six -six. There's 6 carbon chains and another chain of 6 carbons, and they form together to form polyamide. And what we're doing is we're taking that polymer and we're hydrolyzing it. Basically, we use acid and water, and where the um, polymer is, we snap it in half, basically. That's sort of what uh, depolymerization is. We're snapping the chain off, and we're leaving us with our adipic acid, which we're going to use in future videos. It's not the most efficient method, but I guess if you can't get adipic acid any, like, any other way, this is a viable method. It's just not really like practical for the person who can just buy it online. And this is a scaled up procedure from a science madness post. I attempted this a few years back and it worked decently, so I scaled it up. Link is in the description for the original post. First, we need 45 grams of nylon 66. I'm using zip ties because it's convenient. But if you have nylon rod or something else you can grind into a fine powder, that'd be great because more surface area, faster reaction. However, I didn't, so I used zip ties. And no, you cannot put these in the coffee grinder. It won't grind down to a fine powder. I tried it before. Anyways, add your nylon into a 500 milliliter um, flask. And you can see I have an overhead stir on top of it. And that's because nylon, of course, would interfere with the stir bar, so I had to use good mixing. Now add 100 milliliters of water and 35 milliliters of sulfuric acid, and then rinse out your sulfuric acid measuring apparatus, grad cylinder, whatever, with some uh, more 100 milliliters of water. Anyways, add on a reflux condenser, and now we have to bring it to a light reflux. Refluxing it faster does not mean it will go faster. So yeah, try to guess how many hours it took. 40 hours uh, span across a few weeks because I can't leave this running 24 seven. But yeah, 40 hours seems like the minimal amount it needs for all the nylon, uh, at least any large particles, to be completely dissolved. Now, if you reflux for longer, I don't know if it yields better, I don't care. Yeah. Anyways, you can see after a little bit, uh, there are s small little like translucent blobs. Uh, interesting thing about nylon is that it dissolves in acids. So yeah, if you pour hydrochloric acid on nylon, it turns into a goo. And no, you can't use hydrochloric acid, it turns into a goo. So that's quite unfortunate for you European people. Although you could probably use more acid. Around 20 minute mark, I added another 20 milliliters of sulfuric acid because it wasn't completely dissolving. And then finally, you can see, no more chunks, or at least not as much. And it's slightly translucent, but I don't really care, it doesn't have to be clear. Next, you filter it. Um, I filtered it through um, just a paper filter because we're not going to try to get rid of the suspended particles. That's just too difficult and I don't care. So we're just going to filter it through some paper. Now, there's two layers of filter paper because it's an acid, hot acid, so it's going to be through the paper, of course. And ta-da, here's our filter. You can see it's still cloudy, but that's fine. Next, cool it down in a refrigerator to around zero Celsius. Now, filter this off. This is our first crop of crude adipic acid crystals. I am so smart. I whack a piece of quartz around and it's a glass so it breaks. Anyways, yeah, ta-da! First crop of crude adipic acid. They don't look too bad. Anyways, if you want to know how to get rid of nylon powder, add fuming nitric acid to your funnel, or piranha solution, or apparently boiling formic acid, apparently that works, or a solution of calcium chloride and methanol, that also apparently works, I don't know. Anyways, take your filter and now neutralize it with sodium hydroxide to a pH of 3 to 5. Now the reason why we're aiming for this specific pH is because I have no idea. Well, I actually do, it's because this pH seemed the best for the adipic acid to precipitate out, and also sodium sulfate, but still maintaining adipic acid in, in a non-ionized form, so it's not the water soluble, well, more water soluble salt of it. So um, yeah, that's sort of the reason why we're aiming for such a specific pH. I couldn't really find any data on exact pH for adipic acid, of course, but oh well, who cares. So I drink it back and forth worked. 
Now you can see I was shot a tiny bit with sodium hydroxide, so then I had to add in a bit more sulfuric acid to bring back down to a pH of 3 to 5. And this pH, it really seems perfect because we're, what, the reason why we're doing this in the first place is because I don't want to, we don't want excess sulfuric acid anymore. That ruins, it chars up stuff as you boil it down, which happened in my um, first batch attempt, which happened like a year ago. I did that in a beaker. <laughs> it's hilarious. But yeah, it charred everything. So you don't want it to have leftover sulfuric acid, or at least not as much. You could probably also drop the sulfuric acid out as barium sulfate or calcium sulfate, but why? That's just pain, but oh well. So you can see after a while, finally got it to pH 3 to 5 after a bunch of neutral, and hooray! And I added a bit more sulfuric acid because just in case. Uh, it's fine if you have a little bit in there, but just try not to add too much of it. So, yeah. Anyways, cool this down to room temperature, and now decant your solution from the sediment. The sediment, again, sodium sulfate, and also some other stuff. Anyways, wash it with a little bit of isopropanol, and then acidify the whole thing and boil it down. And then cool it down again. And here you can see the sodium sulfate has precipitated out, and yeah. Uh, anyways, we filtered this off now. And then we're gonna add some isopropanol, bring it up to a boil, and ta-da. Filter it, and now take your previous batch of crude crystals and put that in boiling isopropanol as well, and filter it as well. And here you can see what happened after I tried to boil it on the filter. I boiled it for too long and it charred. But I did extract it with some ether and sodium hydroxide, and I evaporate it down. I did get a thin film of crystals on a beaker, which smelled weird, like fish, fish, ammonia, amine, and semen. It's, I don't like it. But I'll probably try this again and isolate the pure hexamethylene diamine in the future because I want to try some polymer chemistry with it. Anyways, after the crystallization, I put everything into a funnel, filter the isopropanol off, and now we're left with a dipic acid, which then I dry in the oven, and ta-da! Now if we account for the weight of the Petri dish, we have 47% yield, which is fairly close to 55% of the original Science Madness post. So hooray, as you can see our dipic acid, it's still slightly wet with sulfuric acid, it's a bit clumpy, but that's fine for most chemistry involving it. If you want, you can do further recrystallizations, but that's it for this video, and see you in the next one.